Hello and welcome to QuickBooks Online Management Reports, a feature you should use. My name is Tommy Stevens. I'm one of the partners at K2 Enterprises. We're very happy that you stopped by for a short tip on how to take advantage of this fantastic feature inside QuickBooks Online. So let's get started. Now, as we get rolling with our discussion on the management report tool available in QuickBooks Online, we want to make sure in a very short period of time here that we cover three specific topics. The first is, let's make sure that we define just exactly what these online uh, management reports are. Let's also make sure that we know how we can go in and access this feature in QuickBooks Online. And then perhaps most importantly, let's make sure that we can go in and create our own customized management reports inside QuickBooks Online. With respect to that first learning objective, what are QuickBooks Online Management Reports? You know, so many people, when they hear the term management report, I think immediately begin to think about operational reports, maybe an accounts receivable aging report or a sales item profitability report or something of that nature. In fact, our QuickBooks Online Management Report can be those but they can also be or consist of or include traditional financial statements, for example, such as an income statement, such as a balance sheet. What makes the management reporting tool so special, at least in my mind, is the ability to take multiple reports, whether they're more financial in nature or operational in nature, and combine them into one report book. And when we do that, then we don't have to go in and generate 6, 8, 10, 12 different reports. We can go in and run the one management report that contains all of these, shall we call them sub-reports, if you will, inside that one report book and distribute that one report book to everyone uh, who needs access to it on our team. So that's what these management reports are all about. Now, they've been around in QuickBooks Online for a number of years now. I would suggest to you that they are one of the least utilized features inside QuickBooks Online. Very, very little uptake on this feature. And I have to assume it's just because most people are not aware that it's there. It's really easy to access. It's really easy to work with, as you're about to see. So to address the next two learning objectives, how do we access QBO management reports and how do we customize those management reports, let's actually go into QuickBooks Online and work there. As you can see, I am going to work in one of the demo files that's available to me. And to access my management reports, I am going to click Reports in the left-hand menu. Upon clicking Reports, you'll notice we have our standard reports, we have our custom reports, and then we have our management reports. And this is where we will go to access our management reports. Now, as you can see, there are three different management reports already predefined by QBO and available to us. We could certainly go in, uh, just focusing on this company overview report, we could certainly go in and change the time period to any time period that we want. But let's focus more on what this particular report contains. If I click View in the Action column, this allows me to go in and actually see the layout of these reports. And it should be immediately obvious that these reports are laid out a little bit differently. They have a much more professional quality and finish to them than just the generic reports that come directly out of QuickBooks Online. For example, as I begin to scroll through this report, we have a nice customized, um, a nice customized title page or cover page, if you will. We've got a table of contents sitting there letting me know that the P&L is on page three and the balance sheet is on page four. And then we see the P&L statement, we see the balance sheet, and uh, we see that they are in fact formatted a little bit differently inside these management reports than they are in the ordinary QBO reporting environment. If I, if I desire to, I could certainly print this report to paper or to a PDF document. But if I close out of the report and go back to the action column and click on the drop down arrow, notice that I have the option to edit the report, which is what we will do in just a moment. I could send it via email. I could export it as a PDF document. I could export it as a Word document, which would allow me then to do further edits if I so desire, or I could copy it and use it as a template for another report. The first several, though, or the, the middle three of those, I should say, send and the two export options, those are somewhat self-explanatory. So in the little bit of time that we have left, I, I think I will just get directly into editing the report. That's probably what's most important, I, I suspect, to most uh, people participating in this session. If I click and say that I want to edit this report, then that is taking me in, as you can see, to an editing mode. 
And among the things that I can do in the editing mode, as we look over here on the left-hand side, I can change the entire style of the report. Uh, give it a different look and feel if I want to. I can add my company's logo if I so desired. I could change the uh, title on the cover page. I could put a subtitle in if I wanted to. I could indicate the report period, who prepared the report, what date we prepared it, and then finally some type of disclaimer down at the bottom. I could also go in and address the table of contents. If I didn't like the fact that it was called the table of contents, I could rename that. Or if I didn't want the table of contents there uh, at all, I could certainly delete it, uh, that table of contents. Further, working down the left-hand side as far as preliminary pages are concerned. Now this is where things get kind of interesting because these preliminary pages essentially turn the report writer tool into a word processor. So if I'm a CPA in public practice, maybe this is where I put my compilation report. Or if I'm the CFO of a growing business using QBO, maybe this is where I include some type of management discussion and analysis, uh, a textual discussion of the financial statements that are going to follow. We can put anything we want in, in uh, th this text box that you see in the middle of the pages. And we can have as many of those pages as we feel might be necessary. Now let's get to the heart of the matter. If I click on reports on the left hand side, this is where I can go in and add additional reports. If you'll recall earlier, I called this a report book. Um, perhaps I don't want the report in the order that it currently is. I, I tend to prefer my balance sheet first. So what I'm going to do in this particular case is begin by deleting the P&L report, and then I will click add a new report and then I will select the profit and loss statement. So I want to see a profit and loss statement, and I want this P&L statement to be for this year, but notice that I also want to compare the previous year, so I'll, I'll make that selection. And then I want to add another report. Maybe I also want to include, uh, for example, the account receivable aging summary report as part of this book of reports that maybe we're going to send to an investor, a creditor, or perhaps to our owners. So I will uh, accept that by saying that I want yet another report, and I want my next report, for example, maybe to be the AP Aging Summary Report. And I'll say that I want yet another report. You kind of get the idea now that virtually all of the, uh, let's call them the generic reports that are otherwise available inside QBO, I can actually come in and include these as part of my report book. Let's assume that those are all of the reports that I wanted to add to this particular report book. I could further scroll down on the left-hand side and add some end notes. As we see down in the lower left-hand corner, end notes, these basically just provide me an opportunity, for example, to create more textual analysis. Perhaps these might be the footnotes if we are indeed preparing um, a little more formal set of financial statements and we have footnote disclosures that are required. We could certainly uh, place those here. Ultimately, over here in the lower right-hand corner, I'm going to say that I want to save and close this report. And when I do so, I will call this my customized company overview, just giving it a slightly different name. And in doing so, I'm not actually overwriting the template that was already out there. I click Save, and now I can go ahead and close that window. And notice that in my management reports, I now have my customized company overview, which means I can go in and run this set of reports. We'll see the print preview here momentarily. Notice there's our different, slightly different look. I didn't put the logo on there, but if we had put the logo, it would appear right at the uh, top of the page. And then we've got our table of contents showing the additional reports that we created, the balance sheet, so on and so forth. Obviously, at this point, I could either print to paper or PDF document directly from within the report, or as we discussed earlier, I could bounce back out and say that I want to send it via email, export it as a PDF document, or export it as a Word document. Clearly, this is a really, really good tool that's available to us now in QBO. Frankly, it's been available in QBO, as I said, for several years. It's one that many people have not found. I'm not quite sure why that is. Or maybe if they found it, they just don't understand how to take advantage of it or uh, perhaps how to customize it to meet their specific needs. 
One of the things that we know about QuickBooks Online, Microsoft, not Microsoft, Intuit is continually adding new features to the application. Um, and, and things like the management reporting tool, I think, is a really good example of these types of features that they continually add. Whether it's the management reporting tool or any other new feature that might uh, appear on the horizon in the not too distant future, be sure to keep your eyes out for these new features and be sure to consider taking advantage of them as they make sense for you, as they make sense for the company that you work for, or perhaps the clients that you serve. On behalf of everyone at K2 Enterprises, we certainly thank you for dropping by. I hope this has been a good investment of your time. Come back soon and check us out online at our website, www.k2e.com. Thanks.